at the beginning of summer, uh, my daughter got a rare illness and it resulted in her spine and her brain pressure increasing. Within a matter of hours, my daughter turned from being the crazy, fun-loving girl that we always knew to a girl who couldn't breathe, battled to breathe, couldn't stand up, couldn't sit, barely could speak. And this happened in a matter of hours. By the time I got her in the hospital, her left arm was completely paralyzed. She was diagnosed with acute flaccid myelitis. It's a rare polio-like condition that affects, uh, affected about 100 kids here in the US so far. Um, the prognosis wasn't good. Out of the 100 or so kids, only a number of them, less than 5%, have had full recovery. That night, I spent time on my phone researching all I could. Um, I got hold of some of the experts and some of the, the specialists that had treated this condition previously. I also managed to get hold of some of the, some of the parents um, that have kids with the same condition. And their overall uh, feedback and advice was to, to try and do as much OT and PT physio physiotherapy as possible. And, and hopefully that, that my daughter would be one of those, those lucky few kids that, that would get through this. You know, I learned a long time ago that hope is useless unless you take action. And that is when we decided to, to take this project head on. The advice has been that OT and PT would be the, the, the most suitable treatment for this, but there was only a 5% chance that, that that would really help and that would really work in the long term. So we decided to take this challenge head on. Uh, we decided that, that we would build a robotic prosthetic arm to help her, primarily with the ability to use her uh, the muscles signals from her existing arm and try to use those to, to control the, the prosthetic. So by encouraging the use of her arm and encouraging that rehabilitation to take place. So that was our project and we, we decided to do that. Um, so while still in the hospital, we set up a Facebook page, we set up a, a wiki and we asked people for, for some guidance and help. Now, it's probably at this time that I should tell you that I have no experience in hardware hacking um, before this. So disclaimer, I'm new at this. Um, the terminology I may use, it may not be accurate, but I, I trust everyone here is, uh, will know what I'm talking about. I am, however, experienced as, a, as an entrepreneur. Um, I do tackle some, some, challenging, some challenging projects, so I, I do know how to, how at least to, to kick these things off. So we started off by boiling down the issue. My daughter's arm was paralyzed from, um, from the shoulder down to her wrist. She's still able to use her wrist. She's still able to use her fingers. Um, now, there was some hope when she was in a zero gravity environment, like, like when you submerge yourself in the pool, she was able to move her arm about 10 degrees each way unassisted. So we knew that some signals were coming to her arm through through her neurons, but there was significant damage. She could do about 10 degrees um, either way. So we were going to need to try and figure out how to pick up those signals. They were extremely weak, but that was a, that was a big, big challenge. The weight of her forearm was about 400 grams, so whatever mechanism we built needed to be able to pick up that 400 grams continually. And we wanted whatever we do to be able to be used over the course of about five hours. So she could take it to school, she could go play friends with her friends. So that was, that was another goal. And then if we had any hope that it would be used on a daily basis and that she would want to wear it, it's gonna need to be beautiful. So now we had all of our requirements and we didn't know where to go. Um, but at least we knew what we needed. And um, so we, we recorded a video together. Within this video, we seeded the conversation with a prototype, a simplified um, idea that we had. So we wanted to create two arm braces to, to hold the, the mechanism. We needed to, to uh, source some type of mechanical uh, uh, actuator or something to, to pull her arm up and down, be it an actuator or a pulley system or something along those lines. And we wanted to embed the sensors in the, in the upper arm brace. And then we decided to, to buy some, some initial equipment to test things out with. And we put this in the video telling people that, you know, this is the stuff we have. 
you know, how can, how can you help us? Um, and within moments, uh, literally within moments, we started to get some feedback and some help. Um, one of the, the people that have helped us right from the start was Jose from, from Mexico. Um, we had never met him before, but he's now been helping us all along. Um, initially, he started helping us via the Arduino and helped us to program the Arduino to, to move the actuator. And this was really fun. So that, those are my two kids and they helping, uh, helping me now to, to sort this out. So um, it was really fun. So, so this is my daughter and she's, she's now learning how to do all of this on her own as well, well with me. Um, from South Africa and Germany, we got help from experts in electrodes and batteries. Then on the West Coast, we got help from a friend. What we needed to do was get a scan of her arm, so a friend of ours helped us with that. Uh, then from Canada, we got, um, uh, we got donated uh, actuators from a company called Actuonics. Uh, some folks from Columbia University helped us with the me mechanism to pull her arm up and down, making sure that, the, that, the, um, that we had sufficient rotation to pull her arm up and down. And then all around the world, we had help from our friends so that was really cool. We, we didn't expect all of this help. Over a course of several weeks, we designed, uh, we went through multiple uh, iterations of the prototype. This is one of the more successful um, prototypes we had. So we used something called Fisher Technique, which is kind of like Meccano or, or technical Lego to, to build out kind of some, some prototypes. Um, and that worked pretty well. We then figured out how best to do a, a 3D scan of her, and, uh, and again, we didn't have any real equipment, uh, proper equipment, but we ended up um, using the Xbox Connect, and I needed to make sure that she, she stays within a certain axis, so I got her to, to stand on a plate and then you know, light on the floor and, and gradually turn the plate to, to get a scan of her, and that worked pretty well. Um, the next thing was we, we really wanted to, to print it out so it fitted her arm perfectly, and we had challenges with that, so we decided to print it out flat using PLA plastic and then put it in boiling water and then mold it around her arm. Um, but I didn't want to burn her, so I, I made some uh, casts, some upper arm and, and forearm casts, and we uh, molded around that instead. But we had a significant challenge, was trying to get that signal from her arm. The, the way the, the muscle sensor works, they measure the voltage differences between um, two electrodes you put on your muscle. And so this is a chart of what it looks like when it's looking at my arm. You can obviously see the, 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 the muscle signal when it's relaxed, when it's active, and when it's relaxed again. And what the muscle sensor then does is it applies a filter, tries to filter out all the noise, it normalizes the, the, the filter, and with this, we then apply a threshold. And whenever the, the muscle signal reaches a particular threshold, we would trigger the actuator. So if, if I pull my muscle, the actuator uh, it would reach a threshold, the actuator would pull up. And if I release that, that, um, that signal, it would push it back down. I also had a, a, an electrode on my tricep, so if I push down, it would actuate and, and push the, the, the arm back down. And this worked really well for me However, for my daughter, it was a different story. This is what her muscle signal looked like. We could barely pick up that she had any activity when she was really trying to pull, pull her muscle up. Um, so this was a serious, serious issue from us, for us. We had to set the threshold so low that occasionally it would be triggered by her heartbeat or by her finger twitching or by something else. So this was a serious roadblock. Um, you know, we could have solved the problem by maybe putting a muscle sensor on her wrist because her wrist did, did work. So she could possibly, you know, twist her, her wrist up and we could use that as a signal. Or we could build a potentiometer on the, on the uh, actual sleeve and, and have her use that. But uh, that would allow her to use her arm, but we really wanted this to be an, a, a device that also helped her rehabilitate her arm. So we were really desperate to try and figure out how to get the signal from her from her, um, her muscle. So this was a serious challenge for us. Um, I come from a computing background and I, I know a little bit about machine learning, enough to be a little dangerous. And 
machine learning takes a vast amount of data and it looks at um, it looks at particular patterns that it could try to recognize. And this is how uh, machine learning for uh, works for visual uh, recognition, voice recognition. So my thought was, can't we, instead of using a, a, a muscle sensor that filters out the noise and filters out and normalizes the the, the uh, signal, couldn't we use something along the lines of, of, of uh, machine learning to, to look at the full raw signal from her arm and try to, to uh, work with that? So again, we put out a video uh, asking for help and uh, after a few days, we got a response. We also found a company called Coapt who are doing something really similar. Um, putting on 17 electrodes instead of two, we managed to uh, we managed to train a system to recognize that signal, and she was able to control a a virtual arm um, using the the signals. So now we're pulling this all together, and and that's where we're at. So we we started a few months back, not having any experience in, in any of this, but we, we're getting there slowly. Currently, we have a prototype that is 10 times lighter than anything else. It's also 10 times less expensive, and we're using a novel signal rec recognition detection system. And that's where we're at. But I wanted to bring my daughter here with me today as well, but we couldn't in, in the last moment, so she wanted to send a video quick. So I just want to show you that. Lorelai, can you tell us what this is? It's the cost for my arm. Okay, ah. let's show everyone how it works. So the actuator can pull your arm up and down. Okay, Levin, why don't you control it? Show everyone how it works. Cool, right? He loves yeah. to get involved. <laughs> um. This is how the, the one muscle signal when I works. Pull my, my bicep. It senses the signal and pulls the arm up. And then when this I this is making it go up and down. That's right. It's like the real human's body. Yeah, it's like a muscle, right? Yeah, that's the shoulder. So this is the arm rig that we built to, to test things out on first. And there's my son getting involved. <laughs> and this, she just wanted to make some funny faces, so I decided to put this in there as well. <laughs> That's it. Thank you, everyone.